What's up, YouTube? We are now doing part six here. We're looking at the multicolored cards here of our Zendikar Rising full set review. I'm Ethan, joined by Alex Nikolic from the Limited Level Ups podcast. We're starting off things with Brushfire Elemental. This is red-green for a 1-1 Elemental with Haste. Can't be blocked by creatures with the power two or less and has Landfall plus two plus two until end of turn. This is a nice one. This is a very solid aggressive creature. So basically... This needs to be double blocked or dealt with a, with a trick or something like that. Like you, you can't trade with this very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, except that it has one toughness. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, after you landfall, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I guess you kind of want to see. This is where it's tricky to draw the line. Like, how good is it? Like, do you want to play that red sorcery that gets an additional land? I don't know. Like, making this a five is pretty nice, but. I am quite skeptical of the red green landfall deck and how good it is. Interesting. Yeah. I can buy that. I can buy it. it's it's a little dorky. It seems a little, it seems a little dorky. I just don't I don't eat like I'm like this is the thing. This is my big bad payoff. Mhm. Mm I don't know. I think I think C plus? C plus. Yeah, I'm like I'm not moving into the landfall deck for this card. No, I don't think if so. I, if I'm in, if I find myself in red green, I'm obviously going to be happy to take it, but I don't think it's a high pick. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. Next up, we have Cleric of Life Spawn. So this is black white for a vampire cleric. It's a two two. Whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life, and whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Cleric of Life Spawn. Yes, nice. yes, please. <laughs> this is like this is an Ethan card. <laughs> but, I mean, in the sense that it is a good card. <laughs> like you like good cards. That's I like good true. cards. This is great. This is so supported at common as we've seen. Yep. This is just yep. like it. It checks all the. It does all the things. I'm like, I want to do the cleric thing. I want to do the life gain thing, and this cares about both. And it gets out of hand in a hurry. Mm-hmm. I mean B B plus. I kind of think it's a B plus. I think I would give it a B. B is fine. B is fine. Yeah. Uh, Cargon War Leader. This is one right red white for a three three human warrior. Other warriors you control get plus one plus one. Yeah, this is like the first warrior card that I'm actually excited to play. <laughs> like then, like ah, I guess doesn't bode well for a deck full of warriors. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's a three mana lore, three three. Like, this is a good card, uh, no doubt. I don't know how good the warrior deck is going to be overall. Yeah. Uh, I think that this is prob like you know, on its baseline, a lord is just this card is probably just to be right. Um, in context, how good it is in the draft when you're trying to bias towards or away from certain decks, might be a little lower than that. Who knows? Um, but you know, I'll give this a B to start out with. We'll go B minus. Yeah. I'm a little less enticed by this. I am enticed <laughs> by this next card. Yeah. So this we got Little Mages Familiar. So this is one green blue for a beast. No types. Two four. Taps, add green blue. Oh, sorry, add green or blue. Whenever you cast a kick spell, you gain two life. This card seems like yeah, an absolute house. It's great. Yeah, it blocks well, it gains you life. That's mana. Yeah, this card's fantastic. This one's maybe B+. B plus. This, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start B+. Plus. Look, look yeah, yeah. I love this, this is card. real nice. Yeah. Uh, Moss Pit Skeleton. Here we go. Here we go. This <laughs> is black green for a 2-2. Plant Skeleton. Weird. Kicker 3. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with three plus and plus one counters on it. And whenever one or more plus and plus one counters are put on a creature you control, if it was in your graveyard, you may put Moss Pit Skeleton on top of your library. Just put it into play. Who cares about Dredge? <laughs> I think it would be a little too good if it was uh, in your hand. Yeah. It's good, though. It's really good. Um, yeah, I think I agree. The fact that it, it triggers like some of these payoffs three times. Right. Right? That's pretty good. Um, I like it, actually. I like it a decent amount. Like, this is a really nice grindy card. I think I'm still... Yeah, the the question is, is it C plus or B minus? It sounds like you're on B minus. I'm on B minus for this card. Yeah. I'm on C plus. Okay, yeah. better or worse than Jungle Creeper? Three minutes, three, three. You trying to hurt me? Oh, I know what Jungle, oh, I know what jungle oh, Creeper. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know what Jungle Creeper does. <laughs> uh, I mean, Jungle Creeper, this is better than Jungle Creeper. Yeah. I, jungle I Creeper was bad, though. Yeah, it was quite bad. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this is someone who has ca- probably cast that card more than anybody. <laughs> All right, uh, next up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next up, we got Marasa Root Grazer. It's a green white for a 2 3 Vigilance. It's a beast. As a two abilities here, the first one says tap. You may put a basic land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And the second one is tap. You may. Oh, sorry. Tap, return target basic land you control to its owner's hand. I think this card's really good. This is like the card you want for your landfill deck, right? Yes. This is this is much better than the the red green one. Like this one enables those multiple nutty, yeah, like multiple it landfall ensures cards. That you hit landfall turn. every turn. Yeah, here. yeah. I think this yeah, this is very good. This one's much better. Yeah, I this this does make you want to go into a white green landfall deck and pick up landfall cards. Yes, right. Yes. Uh, I think this is I, a B. Yeah, this is solid B for me. Uh, Ravager's Mace. This is one black red for an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you auto equip to a creature. Equipped creature gets plus one so for each creature in your party and has menace and has equipped two black red. So I end. Up, I I thought I didn't love this card, but I think the more I think about it, the more I do like in a decent amount. So you know, we already know the prerequisite knowledge here is that red black is likely to have a full party, or the most likely out of you know. That and blue white, mm-hmm. um, and then like you equip it. Let's say again, let's just use our baseline of two, right? Three mana gives something plus two MS. So you put this on your two drop. Maybe you're not doing this on turn two, but you do this a little bit later. Like that's that is a real threat. It turns everything into a very real threat. I think right? my anal- my analogy of Glaive of the Guild Pact is quite apt. Right. Uh, yeah. No, I think so too. And I think here here's the thing. Okay, here's your I'm imagining all these uh, auto equip equipment playing out because they to make up for the fact that the auto equip the equip costs are, are pretty beefy but basically it's just like you auto equip that's a real nice aggressive boost like it's gonna be really hard to block most of these cards mm-hmm. these, these auto equip equipments and then like once you can like that that's or sorry once your opponent can that's a you get to the part of the game where like the four mana doesn't matter as much right so i think the equip costs are less steep than they look the play pattern of two drop Play this. Now you're attacking with a, and I'm probably if your opponent has only one creature, right? You're attacking with a three power mm-hmm. creature that can't be blocked, and then the following turn, your opponent is incentivized to try and double block, and then maybe you blow them out with a trick or a removal spell so that they can't block or whatever. Like, I think this does have really potent potential here. Right. Yeah. I think this one's quite good. I I wasn't high on it before, but I like it. Uh, I think it's still like a B minus, but I think it, it's I, yeah. definitely something that'll pull me into black red. I think I think I agree. Okay, cool. Next up, we have Soaring Thought Thief. This is a great like this. This card's nuts. So it's yeah. it's black and blue for a one three, Ro- human rogue starting off strong. Flash, flying. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one plus zero oh, and. Whenever one or more rogues control attacks, each opponent mills two cards. Yes, That's nuts. Please. Cards yes, not like yes, please. This is going to mill them a lot of the time. <laughs> mill them out before you kill them through damage. Like, well, it's only you only mill twice each combat. Mill two each combat. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I did read that. Each opponent okay, mills two okay. cards. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I did write. Okay, I read that wrong, but yeah. still, it's still very, very good. <laughs> like this is. A B plus level card. This card's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it does everything you want, right? Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, I, I I like this card a lot. Me too. Spoils of Adventure. Four white blue for an instant. You gain three life. Draw three cards, but spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's, it's powerful. It's good. <laughs> powerful, cool, and good. What else do you want from a magic card? It's not. It's nifty. I think it's nice. <laughs> just nice uh yeah i i don't know i like this uh, this is this is very good probably right if you cast this for three mana it's great if you cast okay well two mana is busted three mana is great four mana is fine right like that's just without the discount it's pretty yeah it's not that bad it's like kiss of the amisha ish like not not quite but uh yeah i think this card's all i think this is a b yeah i go with b on this one all right, last up in Uncommons. Yeah, Umara Mystic. So this is one blue, red for a 1-3, Merfolk Resident. Uh, it has flying. And it says whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, Umara Mystic gets plus two, 
plus O until end of turn. So it's a, it's a wee Dragonauts, but it says wee to wizards as well. <laughs> it does say wee to wizards. Uh, I like this. I think the blue red deck looks good to me. I yeah, me too. There's quite. I a, think, yeah. So so now that we're at the end here of our you know our golden comments. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's rank the uh, the tribes or our hot takes for for best tribes to worst tribes. So I think number one we're in agreement. Probably. I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if Wizards is number one, but I think early take, I'm going to go with Clerics. Yeah. Clerics and Then one. it's Wizards. Wizards two. Is it, maybe it's Rogues two, though. Do you think it's, it's close? I think I think all of them are very good except Warriors, basically. I don't think Warriors are bad, but... I don't, I don't care know. about Warriors, yeah. Yeah, I don't care about them that much. I maybe. think I'm going to go... I think I like Rogues two, actually. Rogues I think, two? I think I, right. if, if nothing more, then I'm excited to draft that deck. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Clerics one, right. rogues two, wizards three, warriors a distant four. <laughs> <laughs> At least for now. At least for now. Yeah. Um All right. uh, give him more mystic a B, B minus. Yeah, B minus is fine. B B minus. Cool. All right, that's gonna move us on to our multicolor rares. First up is Akiri Fearless Voyager. One red white for a three three core warrior. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. Pay white, you may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. So basically you can pay white to like save an equipped creature in combat, but now it's no longer equipped. So does it even trade anymore or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, eh. I mean, this is a payoff for, for equipment, for sure. I'm, I'm going like, to want to put equipment the, in my deck. What are the equipment though? Like there's the... St- we're gonna get to the stupid utility knife mm-hmm. at, that's colorless, but other than that, there's a good there's a good warrior payoff that, that we haven't seen at the, at a less than rare. Uh, yes, at, at uncommon for artifacts. Okay, okay, yeah. Right. Um, I I don't know. So then, what is this? A B minus? Yeah, I put it at a B minus. I think. Okay. I mean, maybe it's just better than like. It's very hard to play on this card. And your drawing card. No, this card's really good. I I think B plus for this one. B plus? All right. Yeah. I, I, I can't quite grok this card. I gotta, see it. <laughs> okay. I gotta see it and play, I think. Yeah, that that's fair. All right. All right. Next up. Grackmall. Yeah, we got Grackmall here. So Grackmall is a one black green zero zero, but it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Grakma. And then when Grakma dies, you make an XX black and green hydro token where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Grakma. I mean, so that is yeah. worse. It's a three mana three three that dies into a three three. Yeah, it's great value. That's, yeah, that's a B plus in my yeah. book. This is, this is quite good. Easy um, peasy. <laughs> easy peasy. Kaza Royal Chaser. This is, where is this? Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, blue red for a one two human wizard flying haste. Tap the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn costs X less to cast, where X is the number of wizards you control as this ability resolves. That's cool. It's weird templating. <laughs> it's some mana um, dork. Yeah, it's a mana dork for your mana for your spells. For your, for spells. And it's just like a hasty And it's a hasty flying beater. That's not bad. I, I I looked at this card at first and I was like, oh no thanks. But it's actually not bad, yeah. Alright, I'm I'm actually pretty like we you know we played Voldalian Arcanist, and this card right. is much better it's than Voldalian Arcanist. Than, yeah. yeah, this is like a, I think it's like a, a C plus, right? It's not it's not great, it's C plus, but it's like a C plus. Yeah, yeah. The t- the templating is there, so that means like if you tap this and they kill a wizard, it's a mana ability, right? It can't be interrupted, right? No, they're oh, saying it result, can oh, be it interrupted. can be interrupted, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, so you can spot rule something like you can be like, oh, I'm gonna use this to cast something, and they go, no, I kill a wizard, and then right. Yeah. They have to specify but the I timing. Think, I still think it's C plus. Yeah. All right, next up we have Linvala, Shield of the Seagate. So this is one blue, white for a 3-3 wizard, angel, wizard, as flying, and it says, at the beginning of combat in your turn, if you have a full party, choose to start an online permanent and opponent controls until your next turn, it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated, so you detain it, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, sacrifice Linvala, choose Hexproof or Instructable, creatures you control, gain that ability until the turn. Yeah, this this is a nice one. I think it's a lot of text that is mostly a three mana three three flyer. Uh, well, no, yes and no, right? Like, okay, ignore the party ability, which you'll you're gonna get to some amount of the time. Sometimes you get also, there. Also, it's also just either you know, it's like a it's like a uh, what's it called a 
Flag Some... bearer? Shh. A flag bearer, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so so they have to kill this before they kill whatever mm-hmm. they want to really kill. And it might be this. But be but likely this is the thing they want to kill. Like this is likely your best creature. But then your your team gets exp- or Hector for destructible until end of turn, which is pretty good. Right? I just don't like when they go to kill this thing, mm-hmm. it is unlikely that then that same turn your stuff having Hexper for Indestructible is going to matter. Yeah, that is true. I mean, they uh, it makes things a little bit awkward timing-wise for them. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to be that, that big for them. But I do think that that ability is going to be relevant it will a decent amount up. of time. Like yeah. the, the middle ability there. Yeah, I, I really don't think we're getting to full parties that often. But I, I also know. think that, you know, if we're thinking of Blue-White as a tempo deck... This is great. I, Protects I, your other creatures. This is. I just. I'm just saying. Like a three mana three three fire is like a B. <laughs> this is just good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll put this a B plus. There's just like a whole novel here that I don't, I'm just like, sure. This yeah. is just a three mana three three flyer. Yeah. Right. Um. Next up, we've got Nahiri, heir of the ancients. Okay. Four mana for a four loyalty walker, plus one. Make a one one core warrior creature token. You may attach an equipment you control to it. Minus two, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a warrior or equipment card from among them. Put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Minus three, deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment you control. This card's very good. That's the reason to play warriors. Uh, yeah, even if you aren't playing Warriors, it just makes a 1-1-y one, one, for sure. <laughs> like, right, yeah, 4 mana that's plus really good. One, make a 1-1, one, one, yeah. That's really good. Um, I think Nahiri is probably like an A-, minus, like a build around A-, minus, sort of. So like, if you, can, if you can make full use of Nahiri, she's an A, right? Like, if she draws cards, if she makes things, if you have equipment to attach to the tokens, she's an A. In most decks, she's going to be like an A-, minus B plus, but she's still excellent, and you have the potential to build around her. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with A- minus here. I'm I'm in for a minus on the here. Right, cool. All right, next up we have Nissa of the Shadowed Bows. It's bows. It's a weird word, but it's bows. It's so not it's... bows. Oh, it is bows. I'm gonna walk out right now. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Let me correct you all incorrectly. All right, it's it's bows. Anyway, I can cut that out if you want. <laughs> no, no, leave it. In. <laughs> all right, so this is two black green for a uh, legendary planeswalker Nissa. It starts with four lo- four loyalty. Has a landfall ability, so this is pretty cool. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on Nissa. So she grows aside from any plus ability, she grows each turn if you play a land. That's pretty cool. And then her plus ability is untapped target land you control. You may have it become a three three elemental creature with haste and menace until on a turn. It's still a land. Okay. Negative five. You may put a creature card with CMC uh less than or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield from your hand or graveyard. With two plus one plus one counters on it. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, worth noting, this is not like Nissa, uh, the five mana Nissa in standard right now, where the lands become three threes forever. They right. just go just back to being lands. Uh, but yeah, I mean, she's quite good. She's a little odd. Like, she doesn't. She, the way she protects herself is a lot of loyalty, right? Like, you're going to have, you know, she immediately goes to five, and then, you know, it's going to be hard ish for your opponent to attack her for five if you're if you've got any amount of creatures mm. and you play a land you uptick her again also just like ramps you if you really want I, yeah this see this is fine obviously like a plane, planeswalker but i don't think this is bomb territory no it's like a, it's like it's a, a b, b plus i'd give it a b plus yeah all right next up we, oh i'm nath baby locus of creation yeah. Sweet one. Uh, this is uh, what, what do we got here? It's Worg, white, <laughs> white, blue, red, green. Um, it's a four-four elemental. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and has landfall. Uh, you gain four life if it is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. If it's the second time, you add Worg. If it's the third time, it deals four damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you didn't control. So, for limited, it's a difficult to cast four mana four-four that draws you a card and then gains you four life on landfall that's great i mean it's great Hard to cast it's really great. it's nearly impossible to cast I, I you don't think in your kicker decks you're gonna be double splashing red in, i guess it's funny because it's the one color that i you know i was saying you're you know you're not having black in that deck but i guess actually i guess actually in that deck you do have access to the the two uncommons that let you Right, get multiple double landfall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that too. I mean, okay. double double landfall 
isn't great. It's not like triple land falls where you No, but but so the so you so you have a land drop you oh, gotcha. yeah, 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 plus yeah. the double yeah. search. Yep. Yeah. I think I mean, four mana four four draw a card, gain four each turn. That's that's just very good by itself. Hmm? I yeah. don't mean the other uh, abilities is, don't matter that much. This is a build around B plus. Yeah, I'd go build around B plus. If you have to like rebuy this, also really nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next one we have Aura Skyclave Hierophant. So this is two black white for a three three lifelink core cleric. When Aura Skyclave Hierophant or another cleric you control dies, Jesus. Return target cleric <laughs> with lesser converted mana cost from your grave to the battlefield. Jesus! Ooh-wee. Imagine just like the loot, not like you're not gonna do like real loops, but the fact that you, you sack a thing, you gain some life, you draw a card or something, you get something back. Like this cleric deck. <laughs> this cleric deck, though. Like yeah, what's it's that? soul shift for clerics. That's what it is. This card is nuts. Uh, B plus. B B plus at least. Yeah, like, this could be territory all right this next one ethan yeah m- might get you to play green red let's but see you'll probably i, I have probably not, just be splashing it. i have not read this card yet let's oh see. y'all you're in for a treat <laughs> phylath world sculptors four red green for a five five elemental when it enters the battlefield create a zero one green plant creature token for each basic land you control so not types but each basic land you control mm-hmm. and then whenever a land enters the battlefield under control put f- four plus one plus one counters on target plant you control Eh. Yeah, this is a this. I'm splashing this in my kicker deck. Yeah, yeah. This is an A. Because like red I mean, green, A plus. Green. This is probably this is probably an A plus. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is. An I a. don't see how you lose many unless your opponent just has flyers. You stabilize so well and you cast this. It's a vendor, I mean, right? So you just you just yeah. wait wait till yeah. you have a land drop to give when you play this. Like I would not dang I would not dangle this if you can help it. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, a plus. A? I'm going A. It doesn't matter. Alright, alright, cool. Doesn't matter. All right, next up we have Varazol, the split current. So this is X green blue for a serpent. It's a zero zero. But Varazol, the split current enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it. So it's not X. It's if you spend you can just play blue green, comes in with two counters. Alright. Um whenever you cast a kick spell, you may remove two plus one plus one counters from uh Varazol. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets. Oof. That's pretty sweet. That's great. Yeah, yes, please. So so it's just, a, you know, a, whatever you want to call it, an endless one, a Ugin's. Right. On, you know, any, any of those type cards. And then it's very good. Like, copying a kick spell. It's very good? Ah! Ah! ah? <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a Roll credits. B? All right. <laughs> B probably. Yeah, I think it'd be. Yeah. Um, okay, we got Yash- Yasharn, <laughs> Implacable Earth, two green white for a four four elemental boar. When it ETBs, you search the library for a basic forest card and a basic plains card. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. Weird. So it gives you lands for your landfall cards. It's mm-hmm. pretty nice. Uh, can't pay life or sacrifice. I mean, that's gonna come up some amount of the time. Um, mostly the sacrificing thing. Mm, very minor though. Very, very, n- not not a huge part of the card. But a four mana four four that four mana four four that you finds your two land. lands is good. That's good. That's a B. Good. It's a B. Yeah, exactly. All right. Next up here we have Zagros, a thief of heartbeats. This is four black red for a vampire rogue. It's a four four. And this is this spell costs one last to cast for each creature in your party. Has flying death touch and haste. Other creatures you control have death touch. And whenever a creature you control deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. Alright, so last line not relevant, but you're gonna get this for four mana a lot of the time. Flying death touch haste? Flying death touch haste and your other creatures have death touch? Gross. Yeah. This is this is an I'd say this is A minus. Like it's it's a hasty it's going to come down as a hasty 4-4 four, four a lot of the time. Even a hasty 5-5 five, five is fine. And then giving you other creatures death touch is also really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. The pinging wizard with death ah, touch. Hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's better. So good. 
All right, All right last last yeah. one here is Zareth Sun, the Trickster, three blue black for a four four Merfolk Rogue with Flash. Pay two blue black, return an unblocked attacking rogue you control to its owner's hand. Put Zareth Sand the Trickster from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Nin- ninjutsu for rogues. Mm-hmm. And then when Zareth San deals combat damage to a player, you may put target permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Oh, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> you think they'll uh, finally take Ink Eyes out of the Vintage Cube? Oh this my end? god. <laughs> That's great. Bah, this card's busted. <laughs> it even has Flash. It, it, it's very. Very uh, Fallen Shinobi-esque. It's five mana, four mana to ninjutsu it or whatever. Yeah. Rogue Jutsu, whatever you want to call it. A-minus? Yeah, this, this is this is an A. A, yeah. 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 All right, we're just going pa- to power on through here. Um, no no breaking in the YouTube video. Going, going right on to first up utility knife here in the, the, the colorless cards. Single mana for an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you attach it to target creature you control. It gets plus and plus one. Equip cost of three. Short mm. sword, this is not. No, it is not. The, the beauty of short sword is you can move it around, right? Like multiple times. Oh, this is this is sticking. <sighs> yeah, I I even I cannot support this card. <laughs> okay. Like in a set where power and toughness and raw stats matters a lot, like you know, short sword is, is great, but I don't think this is gonna be like that kind of set. It's it's more much more about the powerful synergies. Yeah. I don't think you really ever want to put this in your deck. I'm going to give this one a D minus. I'm going to go D as well. All right. Um, I may have these in slightly different order. I don't, I don't have the land. The lands will be last. Yeah, so I'll see the lands last. Oh, so next up we have... Uh, Cliffhaven. Cliffhaven, yeah. So uh, Cliffhaven Kite Sail is a one-mana equipment. It says when Cliffhaven Kite Sail enters the battlefield, attach a target creature you control. Creature has flying, and it has the equip cost for two. All right. It's fine. It's like these, it's great. These effects perform. This these cards are better than they look. Right. Yeah. Um. Better in sets that aren't aggressive. Uh, yes. Kind of counterintuitively, just because you have you know a little bit more time for games to develop. If 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 you're both attacking each other, it's kind of just like ships passing the night. You don't really need this card. It's gonna be good. This is honestly one of the better equipment we've seen. To be honest, right? It's true. Like, yeah. See. I'm going to go C-. C-. minus. C- all right, yeah. all right. Uh, next up is Spare Supplies. I'm curious to hear your take on this. Two mana for an artifact. ETB is tapped. <laughs> when ETB is you draw a card, pay two, tap, sack it, draw a card. This has to be not good, right? I'm sorry, Ethan. Yeah, I, I think it's probably not good. <laughs> okay. Like, if there were some sort of synergy for sacrificing, sure. But, like, yeah, it's just a very slow... Like, we were we were talking about, is Divination going to be good in this right. format, right? This is much worse. <laughs> Colorless Divination, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, it is sort of think twicey. Sure. Yeah. No, it's like that's an exact... That's a great... Uh, except you can't you can't ever do it twice the turn you cast it, whatever. You can't can't actually just not a spell. Into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably yeah, like a D. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and our last artifact, I believe uh, the Sentinel... Is that what you have here? No, oh, have Stone... A, yeah, yeah Pack Beast, Sentinel, yeah. and Colossus. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so... Pack Beast, Stonework Pack Beast is a two-mana artifact creature. It's a beast, but it's also a Cleric Rogue Wizard Warrior. It's a 2-1, and it has uh, the Prismite ability. So two-mana, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. As much as I'm loath to say it, mm-hmm. I think this is going to be a good card in this format. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I've seen people call this the best first pick in the set. I do not believe that it's this true. Is not that. Or sorry, best best first pick uh, common in the same way that like skittering for Yeah. No, 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 no. Not the most powerful, but the yeah, best yeah. first. I don't think that's true. I think this will make your its way into your deck. I don't think it's like. I don't think I'm ever gonna be like, ooh, yeah. There's the pack beast, you know? May- like maybe, but the thing I was kind of saying earlier, where it's like there's very few cards, and mostly they exist at rare. Where it's like, oh, yes, you really want your party to come together. Most of the time, you're happy with, like, three, right? So, in a cleric deck where you're not going to have many rogues, let's say. Or, sorry, not rogues. Uh, wizards, let's say. I don't know if you're really going to need to pick this up. Here's what I'm envisioning. Is that... It's pick four. Mm-hmm. And this card keeps me able to go in, like, three different directions. If that's where my draft is heading. Right. It's, it's right. very flexible and very likely to make my deck, I think. 
but do we care about likely to make our deck in this day and age? Like, so many cards can make our deck, you know? Well, like, I'd rather just speculate. I'm, I'm not talking about the times when... You're not talking about not making playables. You're, you're I'm saying... not talking about not making playables. I'm talking yeah. about, like, there's nothing above C in this pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. And I don't want to. I don't want to decide that I'm rogues right now. Nothing worth speculating on. Right. You take this. I can see that totally. So right. I, I think. Yeah, I, I, I just. I think this is like a. I'm gonna say it's a C. I think it's a C. I'm gonna go C minus. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It could definitely move up. Uh, Skyclave Sentinel is three mana for a two three gargoyle. It's flying defender. It has kicker four. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus and plus one counters on it. And as long as it has a plus and plus one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. This is decent. This is quite decent. Like obviously in your in your black green deck, or maybe your yeah. kicker deck. Who knows? But like you yeah, get a counter on this. It's a kicker deck. It's a three four flyer. Right, put the you know the, the the two drop warrior that puts a counter on something. That's not bad. Sure. It's a decent spell to kick. It's a, it's a decent defender early. It blocks it blocks flyers, blocks other things. I kind of like this card. How how much do you like it? I think you want to give this like. So so it's not colorless in the fact that you're not you're not playing this in your aggro decks. You're not playing this in your landfall deck. It, but but in your kicker decks, in your black green decks, like in your sultai flavor decks. I think this is actually decent considering there's gonna be a few ways to put counters on things and it's not it's a good early defensive play and it's a good late game play as well mm -hmm. i like this like a c sure yeah I know that. all right cool last up seagate uh, colossus. colossus yeah so this is a, a seven mana seven five golem warrior but it costs one less to cast for each creature in your party I'm not about this card, personally. No, I don't think so either. Okay. It's it could be a five. I know five mana seven five is actually sorry. Yeah, five mana seven five is kind of massive. Maybe it's just good. You think it's good? Maybe it's just good. Like, I think five mana seven five is not bad at all. Yeah, it's not hard to imagine that. Along the way to five mana. Yeah, I think this is, like, again, just like a C. But this is not even in party decks. In just any two-color deck. Like, it's very easy to imagine having... The difference between this being a... I don't know. So, so chat's, kind of, chat's saying I don't think we should assume party of two. But, like, we're evaluating in the context of the, car, the deck you would put this in. It's not like... Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're not going to put this in a deck with no party cards. All right, I, I'm gonna go see. Yeah. Okay. Let's go see. That's Great. maybe a bit of a hot take, and I think I almost want to go C plus for the for the the gargoyle. Honestly, in the deck it's good in. I'm gonna hot take that one. All right. Yeah. I like it. Um, Relic amulet, first uncommon, two mana for an artifact. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, put a charge counter on relic amulet, and then you pay two tap, remove all charge counters from it, deals that much damage to target creature. Nice. I I, am, I don't like this card. <laughs> oh, you don't like it, eh? I, I don't think it's that good, no. Hmm. So. I, I just, like, in my wizard decks, and all of these, there's four relics, and they're all, like, you know, about the creature, the four creature types. Uh, In my wizard deck, I don't want things that aren't wizards, instants, or sorceries. Right. And and anything other than this being on turn two is bad, I think. But but again, we you know, we, we noted this before. So many of your spell, like so many of your spells, are going to be triggering this card. So if this is the one of the only cards that isn't a wizard, instant, or sorcery in your deck, it's not that bad. And, and it's important to note that like you can get to pick off multiple things with this. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not, not, it's not sacrificed. It. It. It's not sacrificed. It. It's repeatable. But it's not free. Also, like two to cast and then two to activate, and it's not. I, I don't know. I, I just think I don't love this. And I, yeah. I mean, so Flores does nothing. The floor right. of Literal do nothing is quite bad, and the you know the the ceiling of I get to pick off two things over the course of the game is great. I just I, I'm I don't know I'm not excited about this card. I don't think. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of oh god, what was this card called? Uh, from Kaladesh. There was like that that energy rare. It was uh, it was like the 
uh, some sort of pillar or something. And like whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer, you get an energy, and then you could like pay some energy to deal three to something. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And that card was good in that format. Thunderbolt Tower. That's right. Yeah, but you had other. I guess you didn't just need the stuff. Like there were. Other, you had other ways to get. Other ways to get energy. energy. Yeah, of course, of course. I- I'm gonna land on like D plus for this card. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna say C for now. Build around C, but uh, okay. we'll see. Yeah, I think we can assume like these these cards are inherent secret gold cards. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. These are not. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So next up, we have Relic Axe, two mana for the equipment. When Relic Axe enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control, and a equipped creature gets plus one plus one. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two plus one instead, and it has equipped for two. So Pirates Cutlass for warriors, but cheaper. Yeah. This is good. This is like the equipment I think <laughs> for for your warrior deck. Yeah, but you also like I don't. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. Is that insane? No, but it's good. It's like a C plus. It's a C plus, yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Relic Golem, three mana for a <laughs> six six. Can't attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Two tap target player mills two cards. It's inter- this is it interesting? Quite good to me. That's what I think. Yeah. So, uh, again, in your rogue deck where you have incidental, mo- you don't you don't want to be spending you know. <laughs> Eight mana. Eight mana to, to get, yeah, that, that's that's a nightmare. But if your other cards are going to be milling things and you spend, you know, activate this once or maybe twice, that's not bad. It's not bad. And this this also helps you just to, it's just a win condition if the game, you know, goes a little bit longer. Yeah. C plus? I think so. Yeah. Last up. Oh, yeah, last up here we have Relic Vial. More... Uh, I mean, I think it's a great card, but also we'll see uh, what you think. More great things for the cleric deck, I was going to say. Three mana artifact, two mana tap, sacrifice a creature, you draw a card. Okay. As long as you control a cleric, relic vial has whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So it's like a bastion of remembrance. doesn't come with a, a creature, but you can sack creatures to draw cards. Yeah. I just, I, this cleric deck seems nuts to me. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, this feels also like one that you could play in a not dedicated cleric deck, like a white blue party deck. If you have some clerics, you like, have, to have I, some clerics, yeah, I think. and like or like not... some life gain synergy. But like the other ones feel play... a little bit more dedicated. This feels right, like, right. Yeah, it's never... great with clerics, but yeah. also could just be great in a white black in a uh, some sort of white blue more controly deck. Um, I'd say again C plus. I need to go B minus on this one. Like, it's build around B minus, but I think yeah. I think this card's quite good. All right. Uh, Skyclave Relic is uh, up next in the rares. Three mana for an artifact with Kicker 3, Indestructible. Tap to add one mana of any color. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you create two tapped tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic. Weird. <laughs> that is weird. It, it's actually got... It, it kind of has a place in these Kicker decks, right? Because, like, you want the fixing. Yeah. Uh, you want a card that you can kick. Right, it's for your kicker payoffs. So it's like it's like the 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 mana. I mean, the mana on turn six might matter, but I think what's really gonna matter is like the fact that you have a mana rock and a kicker spell later. Yeah, I like it. I mean, obviously in the kicker decks, in the kicker decks, or if you're looking to splash, it's like a C. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. All right. All right. Next uh, up, we've got Lithiform Lamp? Engine. Now we've oh, got yeah, a couple yeah, so, more yeah. rares here. Lithoform Engine is four mana for a legendary artifact. Two tap. Copy target. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Keep what going. laughing at? Two tap. Copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Three tap. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Four tap. Copy target permanent spell you control. Yeah. Uh, I think this is too clunky. Yeah, I probably... Like I'm, I'm gonna like pack one, pick one of this, and build around it. But this is a bad card. Yeah, if you could copy creatures, right? If it's four tap, copy a permanent. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. But the fact that you need the mana on the stack, I mean, maybe this is just your payoff for a, a big mana deck, right? Yeah, I think that, that's why I do think you can build around it. Yeah. Yeah. 
but generally it's gonna be it's gonna be mm, it's not just a bomb right uh, yeah yeah even as a build around it's a little yeah. dicey yeah all right so do you want to get like a c plus c mm, yeah build around c plus sure all right uh, uh next up Myri here myriad construct oh yeah this is a good one actually so myriad constructs it's four mana for our construct it's a four four his kicker for three mana and says if myriad construct was kicked enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control really strange when myriad construct becomes a target of a spell sacrifice it and create a number of one one colorless construct artifact creature tokens equal to his power I mean, it's like the kicker stuff is whatever that doesn't matter four mana four, oh, four, four no that... it does I mean, yeah. I understand that we've got the modal double face cards, and sometimes you're going to kick it, and it'll be a six six or whatever. Yeah, it's not going to matter that often. A four mana four four that dies into four one ones is crazy. Yeah, it's very good. B very good. B plus. Yeah, I go B plus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Forsaken Monument, five mana for a legendary artifact. Colorless creatures you control get plus two plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for uh, colorless mana, you add a, an additional colorless mana. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. Uh, um, no. It says, like, close to zero applications. So yeah, we're, we'll, we'll just give it to an F. We're just going F. Straight up F, yeah. Yeah, straight up F. There's not uh, much. I mean, you know, again, if you, if you want to show us a screenshot. <laughs> yeah, all for, for sure. It, but... Yeah, I think we have uh, four lands left, and then we're done, folks. All right, yeah, base so got, camp. No, yeah, base camp here. So, yeah. Base camp enters the battlefield tapped. It's an uncommon. Uh, it enter. It adds colorless mana or add one color of mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast clerics, rogues, warriors, or wizards. Or activate the ability of clerics, rogues, warriors, or wizards. I don't like this. Yeah, yeah, no. This, this feels like... Oh, man. So there was tournament Turn grounds. Tournament grounds. Yeah, it feels like tournament grounds. But there was another one, too. Unclaimed Territory from uh, Ixalan, Ixalan, where you, like, yeah. chose a creature type, and then it's just, like, these are not good cards. No, these are not good cards. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Yeah, my screenshot of... I had tournament... I was like, oh, I've got this, like, sick knight's right. deck. I'm going to play yeah. tournament grounds. And then I had slaying fire in hand, and my opponent was at four, and I couldn't adamant it. Brutal. Yeah. This is not... Just don't do it. So I would... I think I'm just on F here for this. Yep. I don't think you're getting much equity from putting this card in your deck. Uh, next up is Crawling Barons. This is... Uh, you uh, tap for a generic mana, or four, put two plus most counters on Crawling Barons, then you may have it become a zero zero elemental creature until end of turn it's still a land. It's a good card. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's really nice. Keeps growing. Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, probably not going to pick it too highly, but I don't know. B, B minus, C plus? I'd C plus, yeah. I think that's where yeah. I'm at. Okay. Um, what's going on with this Throne of McKindy? <laughs> yeah, Throne of McKindy. So this is a land. It taps to enter. <laughs> it taps to enter colorless. Yes, we're getting to that point. Is that review? <laughs> we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. It, it taps to add colorless. One mana tap. Put a charge counter on Throne of McKindy. Tap it, remove a charge counter from Throne of McKindy, add two mana of any one color, spend this mana only to cast Hitch Spells. So it like stores your mana. Um, you get a rebate on it. No, not even a rebate on it because you have to tap this. So it's it, it helps you cast your kicker spells a little earlier. I don't think that's worth a colorless land. Probably not, no. Uh, maybe in like the Nuts Kicker deck with a ton of kicker. But maybe no. I think I'm a, I'm a D minus here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And all right, I and now I up. think yeah, I think our last one here is Branch Loft Pathway as a stand-in for all of these uh, dual lands that either enter as these do not enter tapped. So this one enters the battlefield either as a, a green source or the flip side as a white source. So these are are all allied colors no there's six of them and some it's three allies and three enemies it's very strange okay that's weird <laughs> uh and these are probably as, as dual lands often are, are c pluses like mm -hmm. it's it's you're playing that like they're good for splashing and then also very like if if i am in green white this is gonna be a really high pick like i'm gonna take this over most not like over anything that isn't like a top common or better yep yeah 
All right, Alex. There we go. There you have it. Any? Uh, I know. I know. We've been going quite quite a long time here. Can I? Can I get any any final thoughts from you on the set here? Any anything that you feel like? Anything that changed from your thoughts six hours ago to now? <laughs> so, I I still stand by my statement that I, I don't think this is going to be a slow format, right? I think it's going to be uh, very. You're gonna you're it's going to be proactive. You're going to have to be proactive. But at the same time, I don't think the landfall decks are going to be the menace of the format by any means. You know, uh, I think that I'm most excited for the tribal decks, the clerics, the wizards. The, I think those are my front runners for, you know, most supported, right? And and best decks. Like if we're talking about going into week one with you know knowing more knowledge than somebody who hasn't seen a set review or listened to a podcast or whatever, like. I am actively trying to get into those decks to exploit the fact that other people don't know they're as good, right? Um, with those decks being clerics, wizards, those kind of things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you want to do, want to do a, a well, what about you first? And I'll, I'll have one more question. Yeah, I think I'm I'm let I am less uh, excited about landfall than I was. I was mm-hmm. sort of hadn't quite seen it in its full picture. I think perhaps sitting on Canyon Draboa for about a month, like had me just be like, Oh, this could, this is going to be sick. Uh, it seems less good. Um, I'm still quite skeptical of full parties. Mm-hmm. I think landfall looks great, but maybe that's just me light wanting to like blue green a lot, but like that, that deck. Kicker. Oh, kicker, sorry. Right? Kicker looks great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would lump like the, the best decks just having looked at the whole spoiler today looks like, Black white clerics, blue red wizards, uh, blue black rogues, and blue green kicker. So blue. So I mean, but like <laughs> that's not surprising. Blue looked insane. Yeah, blue looked very good. Blue looked very very good. So yeah, pr- so probably trying to like soft bias towards blue early in the format. Blue and probably black, honestly. Like black's removal is so gross too. Black black looked quite good. I guess it's commons are a bit underwhelming, but all right. Well, the last thing I was gonna say is power ranking of the uh, the colors. Just a, oh, a hot a hot take power ranking. Uh, give me a sec. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go blue. Going one to five. Blue, black, green, white, red. Yeah, I think I buy that. I, th- I think I buy that too, which is sad for me, but <laughs> I think I, I agree with that. Bor- it's it's about time that Boros took a backseat and Saltai emerged victorious. Okay, you had you you had M twenty. You had your time. M twenty. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll uh, we'll catch you next time.